Hey there, my name's Ashmeet and I'm someone that's recently finished his first year of medical school at the University of Leeds. I really enjoyed my first year of medical school. I'd go so far as to say that it was the most fun and exciting and satisfying year of my life. I truly loved it. And that wasn't just because of the fact that I was at medical school, it was more to do with the fact that I think I've really well managed, um, you know, a study routine, having a lot of fun with friends, having a really strong social life, having a really, really good support system around me, surrounding by amazing amazing friends and looking after my physical health as well it truly was such that a wonderful said, with me having said that I truly had a wonderful experience at medical school it is indeed true that everyone's experience with regards to how they how much they enjoyed or didn't enjoy medical school varies greatly from person to person of course and this depends on many factors it depends on your personality what country you do medical school in which university you're at and different individual experiences absolutely shape how much you thrived or didn't thrive at medical school. And that's completely fine. Everyone eventually finds their way. Everyone finds happiness at some point or the other. Now, with regards to the actual course itself, of course this course is very science heavy. It's medicine. You're learning about the human body. Now, our course was split into three terms, just like other medical schools. Now in term one, term one seemed to be pretty relaxed as for the most part, we were doing something called the medical sciences. Now the medical sciences module is something that I believe is done at pretty much every medical school. I mean, there is some emphasis on um, things like biochemistry, which involve topics like immunology, the reproductive system, learning about nerves and muscles, nucleic acids, sort of like the basic sciences. Now this is a module that I think a lot of people found quite boring. And when our actual final year exams came along, people really seemed to have neglected this module, which is fair enough. It seemed to have worked and done really well for a lot of people. Personally, I thought it was really interesting. For some reason, I really do enjoy biochemistry. Then things really start to get a little bit more intense and a bit more interesting, actually a lot more interesting. Now in term two, this is when we actually start learning medicine. The way our medical school works, and I think this is probably the best way, it moves from body system to body system. So we start with learning about the respiratory system, then the cardiovascular system, then the gastrointestinal, then the renal, and then finally the reproductive system. So essentially we learn about how that specific body system works, we learn about its anatomy as well, more on that later. We learn about pharmacology, identifying signs for different types of like illnesses and responding to them in time. It really was really interesting. Certain body systems really stood out to me. Certain body systems were definitely harder than others. And I think in our year group, there's a very strong consensus that the strands for the cardiovascular system and I think the renal system were the best and most well taught. But personally, I really did enjoy all of them, particularly cardiovascular and gastrointestinal. Gastrointestinal is a very controversial one. A lot of people seem to really dislike it, but I thought it was really intellectually stimulating and quite interesting. I mean, going on a bit of a tangent, but gastrointestinal is pretty interesting. I mean, if a patient presents to you with abdominal pain, it could be a million different things. To me, it seems like one of those specialties that really involves a lot of like logical thinking and problem solving, which are things that, are, which are qualities that I'm really, really attracted to. So that strand in particular, I really, really enjoyed. Now throughout the year, we also learn quite a lot of psychology. And in psychology, we look at topics like child development, understanding consciousness, memory, the process of learning, understanding pain and mental health, and so much more. We'll talk a bit about child development, for example, because this was quite an interesting topic. And it's one of the first ones that we learned about. So, so we learn about how very early life experiences when a child is really, really young, we're talking like just a few months old, will influence how a child behaves much later in their life and how a parent's behavior towards their child has a very, very strong impact on how they develop and grow. Our university, the lecturer in psychology for year one, truly, truly amazing. He really was captivating as a lecturer. A lot of people would agree, some might disagree. But whenever I used to miss a single lecture in the psychology module, I would make sure to watch it later because I really did enjoy that module. I really did enjoy those lectures so, so much. We also do have a few modules that are a lot to do with um, ethics and professionalism. Now, a lot of people argue that these um, ethics and professionalism courses were a bit like too much. There was a bit too much that we had to do. Now, I slightly agree. There was a bit too strong emphasis on professionalism and ethics. Um, and sometimes it used to feel a bit boring. 
but it's something that the medical school has to teach. I mean, the roles and responsibilities that come with being a doctor, aside from being a competent scientist, such as having good bedside manner, being nice to your patient, ensuring things like confidentiality and patient safety, they are absolutely important things and we do have to know them. We also have a research module. Now, the research module, which we know as Enquire at our university, seems to be the least favourite. To me, I really enjoyed it because I'm someone that's really enjoying research at the moment. Currently, I'm involved in a decent few research projects. I think research is absolutely amazing. A lot of people disagree and that's completely fine. Research is absolutely tedious, it's tiring, it's not for everyone. And people really seem to dislike um, the bits of like research projects that we had to do in the year. These research projects, they weren't really that significant. It was just so that we could get a sort of like flavor and understanding of what writing up a research report would look like. And a lot of people didn't seem to like it, which is again, completely fair enough. It's certainly possible that when you move into year one you might not enjoy research that much and that's completely fine. I will quote our medical school on this now. Now with regards to research it is absolutely true that not everyone has to do it but quoting our medical school on this like it is important for every future doctor to understand because medical literature evolves at such a rapid rate it's always important to be updated on what are the newest guidelines, the latest technologies, the latest means of diagnosis etc because these are all things that play into uh, patient care management and it's really important to know absolutely now at the University of Leeds we have early placement we do have early patient contact and in terms two and three once a week once a day for actually half a day we do have placement so across these two terms one of these terms you're gonna be in secondary care like in the hospital and the other term you will be in GP and primary care. Well, personally, I've made a whole video about GP and primary care. I really, really enjoyed that placement so much. My secondary placement, I did not enjoy it that much, which is why I did not make a video on it because I do not want to piss off my university. But I really did not enjoy my um, hospital placement for many reasons that I won't get into. However, there is something that I have realized. As a first year, there isn't that much you know and there isn't that much you can do at your placement. So it's best to not expect too much from it. You can, to a certain extent, expect disappointment and not feeling fully satisfied from your placement, which is how I felt from my secondary care placement, because my secondary care placement was truly unfortunate, to say the least. But the main goal with having early placement in year one is that we can have small bits of exposure as to how the hospital system works, how GP practices work, and appropriate means by which to interact with patients, which is 100% a very important skill to have. So all in all, yes, placement is good. It can be improved, especially for my place, and my placement kind of sucked, but it's fine. Now let's talk about the workload. Now the workload is definitely high but it's completely manageable. If you're on it from the start, if you study from the beginning, you will be fine. Now, this isn't something that I did. In term one, I did not study that much and I have no regret. Term one tends to be not that heavy. I mean, it is medical school, it is first year. You're probably gonna be 18, 19, 20 by the time you start your course. It is important to have fun. Don't work that hard and certainly don't burn yourself out. There will be many exams in the future. From the point you enter medical school, you're gonna have many examinations to the point you become an actual consultant. And even when you become a consultant, there are certain exams you'd potentially have to do. So it never stops. Don't burn yourself out. Learn to have fun, learn to enjoy. Now, personally, I did do a decent amount of work throughout the year, but I definitely wasn't completely consistent until the final term which is completely fine. I am satisfied with how I performed in my exams, although how I really did in my exams is something I'm gonna find out four days from now when we get our results. But there's nothing I changed and I'm really happy with the way I balance my social life and the way I actually prioritize my social life almost every single time over studying. If one of my friends came to me and said, Ashmi, we're gonna go out or Ashmi, we're gonna go and do this or that, I'd always say yes and my studying would always come second. With that being said, I chose this course for a reason. I want to be a good doctor and I do work hard. And you absolutely should not neglect studying. It's really important. Knowing stuff from your first and second year really does seem really important. And this links really well to people talking about their own study so, routines. Now you might learn about certain people in your year group that have crazy ridiculous study routines. That's completely fine. Do not feel intimidated by these people. I mean, they're doing really well for themselves, 100%, but take it at your own pace. Just because someone's billing like five, six hours every single day, grinding it out in the library, working hard, doesn't mean you have to as well. Different things work for different people. And in first year, you really like grilling yourself, working so excessively hard to the point where you become upset, to the point where you sabotage your social life and well-being is absolutely, it's, it's stupid. I'm not gonna lie. Take it easy, take it at your own pace. 
and don't look at how other people are studying, don't look at how other people are doing, it's fine, just take it at your own pace. Because in medical school, grades truly are not the most important thing, and I can promise you they aren't. Up until now, in order to get into medical school, absolutely grades were really important. Getting through school, passing your entrance tests and exams, those are difficult things to do. Now I'd say that maybe studying for an hour every single day is enough. When exams come along, then definitely ramp it up a lot more. But then just focusing on getting a really high grade is not that important. It's not going to be of big benefit to you in the long term. Now absolutely, being a good student throughout medical school is important. However, I'd really argue that a student that has been doing decently well throughout medical school and indulges in things like research, extracurriculars, attending conferences, and also having decent grades will do much, much better in their academic lives, opposed to a student that's just been studying and working really hard to achieve those top grades. Grades truly aren't the only thing that matters that much in medical school, I can really promise you that. Especially if you plan to work in the UK, you will become junior doctors that work for the NHS, so it really doesn't matter that much. Now again, with that being said, your aim should be to be a good doctor and not all of the information that you learn at medical school is completely clinically relevant. There's a lot of things that you will not be able to learn and that's just to do with the very high volume of content that you have to study and not all of that stuff is going to save a patient's life. Focus on things that are medically relevant and focus on things that will help you as a doctor in the future. Now, in all fairness, I did feel stress. I did feel stress in the two weeks leading up to exams, but again, I think I did fine. Stress is normal, stress happens, but I managed that stress really well by taking breaks, having fun, meeting friends, meeting friends, going back home to spend time with my mum, and I absolutely have no regrets. One more thing, when you start medical school, people will seem very smart. People are smart, but they're no different to you. Imposter syndrome is a very real thing that happens when you enter medical school and I did feel imposter syndrome in the very beginning I did have a very weird feeling that all of these people are very very intelligent Why am I here? But then as you progress throughout medical school You'd slowly realize that everyone's just as stupid as you no one knows everything and learning new things Just comes with hard work and having the energy and dedication and drive to want to learn more Now let's talk a bit about anatomy now anatomy is something that it, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very controversial one, anatomy. Now, anatomy is something I truly enjoyed. Now, at the University of Leeds, we look at prosections to learn about the human body and the different parts. And yes, anatomy, there's definitely a lot to learn. People found it really, really challenging, especially the exam. Now, our mock exam in term two were particularly difficult for uh, the anatomy spot test. In the anatomy spot test, there would be like pins on different parts of the body and we'd have to name them or talk about what they do, etc. It is a very difficult exam, it really is hard. The only way you can learn anatomy is by being proactive. By going to all of your anatomy sessions, asking questions, doing pre-reading, making ankies on anatomy. It is really, really helpful. Anatomy is challenging and it's not something that you can really cram you're gonna to have to learn it from the start and be proactive from the start. In our, in our final exams, I think I did decently well in the anatomy spot test. Of course, my actual results will tell me how I've actually done, but I thought it went fine. Now, the anatomy spot test will be a very dreaded exam if you're entering the University of Leeds or any other medical school, or any other medical school where they test you on your anatomy. But if you're someone that really enjoys their anatomy and really enjoys learning about how the different parts of the body, they interact and work together, perform different functions and do different things, you're someone that potentially might enjoy surgery in the future. And I feel like anatomy is one of those things, either you really, really enjoy it or you absolutely dread it, you hate it. There is absolutely no in between. Now I'd like to talk about one final thing. Don't be a snake. A lot of people talk about medical school as being this really competitive, stressful environment, but it doesn't have to be. In the future, we're all going to be doctors, and really, the way I view it, I don't care how well other people do opposed to me. Everyone in my medical school did better than me in exams. I would not be bothered as long as I've done well in my exams, and I truly do mean that. Now, I'm someone that wants to see other people do well and progress and make it to year two and become a good doctor in the future. It's in my interests and everyone else's interests to have good doctors and it's important that we support each other and help each other get through medical school. Towards the end of medical school, I started giving up my resources and from the beginning of year two, from term one, I want to give out my resources for free. I want to build my resources and give them out to everyone in our year group because I really, really care about other people doing well. Now, I'm someone that absolutely does not mind and actually really, really enjoy enjoys helping other people out and giving out all of my resources for free to anyone that needs it. Because when we look at the big picture, at the end we're all going to be doctors, right? And we'd want our doctors to be happy, we'd want them to be very knowledgeable, so help them out 
and it really doesn't matter um, and it really doesn't matter if someone does better than you in an exam it really doesn't and having the mindset that you have to do better than everyone else to the point where you don't help them out where you don't share your resources with them is very poor behavior but all in all enjoy your first year of medical school definitely do not overwork yourself do work hard take breaks have fun learn new things develop new hobbies but enjoy it that's the most important thing you create your own experience at medical school or at university it's completely up to you and i really hope you thrive in medical school all the best